this video guys, I will show you how pros get maximum FPS in CS2. I will also show you some hidden settings to reduce input delay in CS2. So make sure to subscribe and hit the like button. Without wasting any time, let's dive into video. The first step to optimize your gaming experience is to adjust your keyboard data queue size to potentially reduce input delay. Start by opening the registry editor. To do this, go to the Windows search bar, type regedit, and select the registry editor. Right-click on it and choose Run as administrator to ensure you have full access. Once the registry editor is open, navigate to the required location by pasting the specific path mentioned in the video description into the address bar at the top of the editor window and pressing Enter. This will take you to the appropriate folder, where you'll find a setting labeled Keyboard Data Queue Size. Double-click on this setting to edit it. By default, the value is usually set to 100, which allows up to 100 queue presses to be queued for processing by your PC. For games requiring rapid inputs such as frequently pressing W and D for movement lowering this value can reduce the buffer, thereby decreasing input delay. A commonly recommended value is 65, though the ideal setting may vary depending on your specific setup. Reducing the value decreases the number of key presses in the queue, enabling quicker action, but if set to low, it may result in missed inputs. Adjust the value incrementally in steps of 5, testing each adjustment to ensure no noticeable keypresses are missed. For instance, you can try 95, then 90, 85, and so on, until you find the optimal balance between responsiveness and reliability. Remember to keep the setting in hexadecimal format, then click OK to save your changes. After finding the ideal value, you should notice improved responsiveness in your gameplay, allowing for smoother and more precise actions. Now open your CS2 settings, so display mode. I think you always want to have this on full screen. This introduces the best latency, but for the purpose of this video, I'm going to stay in window mode so I can change settings quickly. Aspect ratio. I usually play 4x3. If you play 4x3, I would recommend 1280x960. That's the most used resolution by pros. Here you go this graph, but if not, I would just stick to 16x9 and then 1280x960. Let's move on to advanced video settings here. Boost player contrast. I always have this on because, in dark spots, people just kind of glow. I don't know if you can really see this, but I always have this enabled. V-Sync. You should always have this off unless you're using G-Sync, but using G-Sync in a competitive game is kind of a weird decision. So, I don't know if I would do that. NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency. I would say if you have FPS below 200, keep this enabled plus boost. In my benchmarks, enabling it alone reduces your frames, and enabling plus boost gives you way better FPS. So always have this enabled plus boost if you have it on. If you have more than, I would say, 300 FPS constantly, just keep this on disabled because it will result in the best FPS, and you already have low latency. For me, I keep it on disabled. Maximum FPS in game, I usually keep this at zero. I like having the most amount of frames as possible. It's the best for latency, whatever people say. Just like, trust me on this one having more FPS is always better. Multi-sampling anti-aliasing mode, I usually have this on for X. Global shadow quality, put this on low. I would say to put this on high but they just added dynamic shadows, which I'll show you what it does now. Model, texture quality. I put this on low as well. Texture filtering mode. If you have this on disabled or billionaire, my skins look weird, like they're kind of blurry and stuff. So if you have skins like me, just put this on for X. This makes the game look a lot sharper as well. Shader detail, put this on low. Particle detail, you don't want this. It's like for the map, and so I keep it on low. Ambient occlusion disabled. High dynamic range, this doesn't make sense in a competitive game, so I put it on performance. Fidelity Super Resolution FSR, that's how it's named usually. I would always recommend having this off unless you have a 4K or 1440p XLE monitor. But then, like, why are you playing CS? It doesn't make sense here, right? If I have this on performance, it just makes everything blurry. Like you don't want this in CS. You just want it disabled not even having this in ultra quality. Maybe if you have a 1050 as your GPU, but like, just have this disabled. Next, right click on the start menu and select device manager. In the device manager, locate the drop down menu labeled system devices and expand it. 
Scroll through the list until you find an entry called High Precision Event Timer. This timer is known to sometimes cause lower FPS on certain systems, making it a common practice to disable it for better performance. To disable the timer, right-click on it and select Disable Device. Personally, I disable this setting, and it has noticeably improved my system's performance. However, keep in mind that if you experience a drop in performance or notice lower FPS after disabling it, you can easily re-enable the timer by following the same steps and selecting Enable Device instead. For the majority of users, disabling this timer usually results in improved system performance, as it has in my case. To clean up temporary files and improve your system's performance, start by closing all open programs on your desktop. Then, press Windows key plus R to open the Run dialog box. Type temp and press Enter to access the folder containing temporary Windows files. Once inside, select all files, and then hit delete to remove most of them. Don't worry if some files can't be deleted. This is completely normal as some files may be in use by the system. Next, open the Run dialog box again by pressing Windows key plus R, type percent temp percent, and press Enter. This will take you to another folder containing temporary files. Repeat the same process. As before, it's normal if a few files cannot be removed. Finally, open the run box one last time and type prefetch, then press enter. This will bring you to another folder with temporary files related to prefetch data. Again, if some files remain, that's expected and not an issue. By completing these steps, you'll free up storage space and potentially enhance your system's performance, ensuring smoother operation and quicker response time. So guys that was today's video, hit the like button make sure to subscribe, peace out.